He said, better be informed. Yes, sir. The American agent has infiltrated the ex Hello. Hello, hi, welcome back, you look nice. Welcome back to the Combat Footage Show. I'm Ronnie, I'll be your host. Hit the like button, drop a comment, you know the rules, so do I. Here we go. Come on, come on. Chat's on the best one. Where you at? Alright, who's out there? Rochester, how are you? London, what's going on? Uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Ohio, OH! I had these two nerds in, in one of my units that at any time, it didn't matter how much trouble or who was calling Who's calling roll? One of, one of those idiots would say OH and the other one would say IO. God, that got annoying real quick. Anyway, Illinois, Germany, what's up? Houston, how are you? Uh, Thunder Bay, I don't know where that is, but that sounds cool. That's a cool name for a place. Hello from Las Vegas. What's up, man? We'll be out your way here soon. We'll talk about that in a second. Minneapolis, what's up, guys? Hi, welcome back to you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. We didn't see you on Monday. Monday was Christmas. Um, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. And since I probably won't see you until after the New Year, there should still be a New Year stream here coming up on Monday. I had to check if I was muted or not. I didn't do any audio checks before the stream tonight. Uh, but there should still be a stream on New Year's. Uh, but I need to give you a caveat way ahead of time. It will be one of the most not safe for work streams that we have all year. Typically, the New Year's stream is one of the uh, most brutal streams for us to watch. And the reason is, is we go through the most watched videos on Funker 530. Now, under a lot of circumstances, some of those, if not most, close to all, are going to be war in its most truest reality, which is brutality. So I want to give you a heads up way ahead of time that Monday's stream is going to be a heavy one. Um, but again, Merry Christmas to you. I hope it was great. It was our first Christmas with the new baby. And I took most of this week off from both streams um, just to spend some time. Um, you know, I was deployed for a lot of the early stages of the first two and getting a chance to now do what I love here, work from home and, you know, discuss war, try and impress its reality upon people uh, rather than personally, you know, be a part of it. Um, I, I'm afforded the opportunity to spend more time and I am very grateful for that and you are a big part of that. So thank you for it. Um, but we have quite a long show tonight. Uh, I got started a little bit later than I expected to. Uh, I'm home alone and uh, I am an absolute child and just could not get all of my stuff together uh, in time. I'll own that. Uh, but we're going to start in Israel and we'll be covering quite a bit. We'll see some footage from the Lebanese Hezbollah in the north. Uh, I don't care if it's pronounced Hezbollah. We'll see footage from the West Bank tonight. Some raids from Israel, some money heists, possibly for a reason, can't be certain, uh, but also from Gaza all the way down towards Rafa and the border crossing near Egypt. But we'll also be doing a Ukraine section tonight where we're going to see some pretty heavy footage from multiple areas, uh, not least, uh, effectively, the entirety of Ukraine and a major missile barrage that Russia sent in response to uh, another one of the Black Sea Fleet's ships being taken down. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Anyway, I did see a couple of pieces of support come across before we got started. I'm not sure why I have the Leaning Tower of Energy drink over here, uh, but for those that were asking, it is Bulkhead. Bulkhead Energy. 
Target, thank you very much for the $5. Been looking forward to this all week. Uh, I love you. Welcome to Costco. Thank you very much for the $5, sir. And Pontus, thank you for the $24.75. Happy New Year, Funker and fans. We will, like I said, see you on January 1st. Let's get started for the night, though. Uh, we are going to start again, just like always, on the ISW's interactive map. Here we go. Coming up for you now. And we're live. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still recovering from that uh, plague that I had last week. We'll be starting here in the north, like I told you, with uh, quite a few strikes. We'll see some missile barrages coming from Hezbollah into Israel and Israel's stated response to that. We'll be stopping in Nablus. I think we'll see a little bit from Janine, uh, Hebron. I don't think I have anything from Jerusalem. And a lot of that is more contextual than it is any kind of, you know, combat or ground-based, uh, you know, helmet cam footage, stuff along those lines. But then we'll be headed for the, mo the majority of our geolocatable footage into Gaza, starting here with some pretty heavy footage of another soft-skinned vehicle from the IDF being hit uh, by what looks like perhaps an improvised explosive device. That'll be one of the first videos we get to when we get into the Gaza section. Um, but we're also going to spend a little bit of time down here in Khan Yunus, and right around in here, we'll see some interesting footage from Hamas relative to aid that is indicated in the stream description. So again, starting up there near Lebanon, in Lebanon, I'm going to take you to Google Earth where we can get started on the geolocations. Here. So this is going to be perspective footage, if I recall this footage correctly. We are inside of uh, Israeli-held territory here. I think this would be close enough to be Golan Heights. But you're going to see footage of a Lebanese Hezbollah rocket barrage as it flies overhead. Video's coming up for you now. Here you are. Somebody settle that dog down. I just want I just want you to see the uh, rockets as they're flying again. If you blinked, you might have missed it. There they are. Almost knocked over my energy drink. And more rocket barrages here. These were targeting uh, Rosh Hankira. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but that is out a little bit towards the coast in Israel. These ones are even harder to see, so I'm going to try and give you... We, we might have to watch this a couple times, but more uh, Hezbollah rocket barrages. Some of these you're going to find get, get intercepted, if not all of them. Really difficult to tell. That time we had a chicken. Last time we last time we had a dog, then it was a chicken. Israel's response to that second barrage, at least. I didn't see a direct response to the first, but to the second barrage, Israel conducted an airstrike here. This is about to be the footage of that airstrike. Israel said that this was the launch location for that second barrage. Some, if not all, like I said, were intercepted.
what was once is no more. Now sometime on or around the 28th were more strikes. And I didn't give you the date of that first barrage that we had there. The date of that first barrage was on or around the 27th. These strikes took place on the 28th. So they very well might be a, re a direct response to that specific barrage. They're obviously a response to something, but here are the strikes. I do have a location for, for these in the stream description, I believe. I actually had to delete a, quite a bit of tonight's um, list of videos and uh, descriptors that I had in there because, once again, we were well over the character limit that YouTube allows for us. Something that I'm considering doing is when I push the tweet out for the uh, live show is I typically include the thumbnail and then a follow-up link for the live stream. Uh, what I'm considering doing is doing a follow-up to that that has the links for all of the uh, videos. That way, they're not truncated. <clears throat> Excuse me. That being said, Twitter also has a character limit, even for its long form. These strikes are from just today. Targeting, once again, Lebanese Hezbollah. A really heavy air camp campaign from Israel into Lebanon. In some cases, up to 45 kilometers into Lebanon. It's probably not going to buff out. Harold, thank you for the 10. I appreciate that. All right. We're going to be headed into the West Bank now. And I do want to do some orient, some orienting to the map here. Uh, just to help you understand the different colors, I saw a couple questions in the chat. I've, I've gone through this before. This is the Institute for the Study of Wars map, or ISW. You can find it at understandingwar.org. Just to give you, uh, you might not be able to see this, an understanding of what you're looking at here. Any checkered area, blue checkered area, those are military restricted zones. Uh, those are areas closed off to Israeli c civilians where military preparations and staging are taking place. Uh, and in some cases, uh, operations are taking place, including, you know, here in the north. There have been small arms, um, you know, skirmishes and clashes. It's not just rockets and mortars and indirect being fired across. We, I haven't seen video in quite a while of any, you know, uh, direct contact but it has been reported to take place. Now, once we move down into Gaza, that's where we start to have a few other colors. So anything that is light blue is uh, geo-identified, geo so um, geolocated as identified, cleared, or IDF holds those areas. Uh, these darker blue areas, if I recall correctly, yes, are claimed Israeli clearing. And then I don't actually fully understand the differentiation between this i'm just going to be fully transparent with you this lighter colored blue and this blue uh, i can understand the difference between these two this one just doesn't make a whole lot of sense and i don't think it's really depicted well over here on the left side but that should help you understand some of these colors that we have here now we're headed into the west bank though Here, ish, West Bank's large. This. Now I'm going to take you over to Google Earth, give you an exact geolocation for it. This took place on or around the 26th. The published date was the 26th. But the IDF reported a, reported the destruction of a Hamas weapons lab. There is very poor. Uh, information that floats around uh, stating that Hamas isn't in the West Bank. They, they absolutely are, and they have claimed attacks in the West Bank. They themselves have claimed a presence in the West Bank. 
here is that footage. A little bit of a controlled detonation for you. All right, just wanted to put a pause here so you can see some of these Borderlands guns, like this one here. I'm not sure what that is. And then let's not forget the greatsword. Right there. It's kind of un unwieldy. Now that was actually the only geolocatable, I should say, footage for me. Uh, geolocation of footage is a niche skill set. It's not something that I have. I uh, am a big fan of the team over at Geolocated. I've talked about them before. So a lot of our geolocatable footage um, starts there with any additional contextual information that I'm able to find. Uh, in certain cases, I'm able to find uh, the initial reports that claim a general location. And that's the case that we have for the rest of these that we have in the West Bank. Uh, I, I don't have any location for this one, but um, it's a very short clip. Uh, here you are. This is somewhere in the West Bank. Didn't really get a whole lot of rotation in the hips on that. It lands clean, though. I don't know why I had that one written down. But this is the one that I really wanted to talk about. Information's been floating around about a money exchange. A money exchange that was raided by the IDF in the West Bank. And the IDF claims that this money exchange, think Western Union, uh, was was going to be or was being used uh, to provide funding for Hamas. This is the IDF's official release, and then we'll see some follow-up releases from that. Something like 2.5, 2.8 million U.S. dollars, which I think equates to around 10 million shekels, was seized by the IDF in this raid. I've got some more footage here that was shared around. Coming up now. All right. Again, you know, something that something that uh, I don't I, I probably talk about more than I think I do. I'm not the best. This show is not the best place for you to come to for news. Right. So the deepest context is not something that we are going to have, right? There are going to be, you know, quote, influencers out there with hot takes and O-centers that can deep dive 
so much, uh, you know, from an individual video perspective. And we do that on occasion with our edited uploads. Sometimes we'll take a specific piece, uh, a specific piece of combat footage or footage from a, a conflict, and we'll deep dive it. We haven't done one of those in quite a few months. I, I've got three or four that I plan to launch in January. Um, but we're ultimately just here to give you kind of a brushstroke overview of the context we were able to find. And if it's something, the, one of the reasons that I provide you guys links in the stream description for at least the majority of the stuff that we cover is for you to hopefully go and, you know, research additionally yourself. Uh, we end up covering so much individual footage that there could be circumstances where there is critical context that I just might not have. You know, that's just me being transparent and managing expectations. So there is a lot of deeper information on this quote money heist um, that's being shared around by uh, accounts from both sides. And I am not going to try and comment on it or dive into it. Uh, the raid took place. I gave you the approximation of amount of money that was seized by the IDF. Uh, and I gave you what the IDF stated was the purpose of seizing it. Let's move on though. We're going to, we're going to see some footage of some clashes in Kalendia, uh, which is in Hebron in the West Bank. Don't have a perfect geolocation for this one, but it's three videos, each of which providing a little bit different of a perspective. Coming up. Okay, let's check some of those other perspectives that we have. Got one here that has a view of IDF. Looks like they have, you know, some form of a uh, detainee POW, if you will. And, uh, you know, it's div it's difficult to know if this is IDF or if it's, uh, you know, maybe police. Di differentiating between the two is becoming more and more difficult. And then there should be one more perspective of that. Well, not necessarily of that. This all takes place in Hebron, in the West Bank. Now, I'm not 100% certain what's going on here. You got some form of, you know, heavy equipment, heavy machinery being used here. A couple explosions. Outside of that context, though, I have very little. We're moving into Tulkarm in the West Bank. Where this is kind of just contextual. Uh, just some imagery of the IDF post-raid. Or on patrol, one of the two. They do, they do get driven up on here. And I think one of these guys stops. Ends up flagging the guy with his flashlight. You can almost hear you can almost hear the tires squeal on the vehicle. Our turret gunners had uh, these extremely bright dazzlers that when we would cross um, any kind of intersection, and I mean bright, like it, <clears throat> they, we'd, we'd mess around with each other and flash each other with them all the time. Extremely bright dazzlers, kind of the same same thing there, making yourself visible. Now, near Nablus, so we're kind of bouncing around geographically here. Some more IDF in the West Bank. There is a, there is a purpose and point to all of this.
Diane? Diane? All right, and that'll do it for the West Bank. The purpose and the point to showing uh, that contextual type footage, we don't end up you know, getting a lot of the same kinds of footage that we get out of Gaza. But from an op-tempo perspective, uh, the IDF is very active in the West Bank. They are publishing officially on uh, the accounts. The accounts that I can rattle off the top of my head are at IDF, at IDF Online, uh, at IDF AF, I think is their Air Force one. They are primarily officially publishing footage from Gaza. Now, there are active and a lot of active operations that are taking place in the West Bank. And under most circumstances, the best insight that I have been able to find for those, with a few um, exceptions, has been like cell phone type footage like this. Um, but since... Uh, I do still try to use as many official sources, quote unquote, official sources as possible. That way I can provide whatever context was provided by that official source. I can't always verify it. Uh, under most circumstances, we don't end up covering a lot from the West Bank. Uh, I still wanted to provide a little bit of insight that throughout, uh, we, we hit three or four different locations. The IDF is very active. We're moving into Gaza, though. So let's uh, head back to the map. Uh, here, so we were in the West Bank. So we saw a little bit of footage from Hebron, uh, a little bit of footage from Nablus up here, a little bit of fo footage from Tulkarm. But now we're headed into the West Bank, and our very first uh, bit of footage that we have here takes place right in this area. Now we are going to take a look at an exact geolocation for it between Beit Hanun and Beit Lahia. Uh, I don't know why I'm moving the map. I don't just do this. Nobody said I was good at this. Here we are. So, uh, discretion's advised on this one. Last Friday, we watched some really heavy footage of an armored convoy. Um, actually, yeah, it was last Friday. Sorry, it, it took me a second to remember when we last streamed. And I recognize that we need to clean up the schedule a little bit. Uh, we will be mostly back on a normal schedule through SHOT Show. There might be one day change, but we should still have two a week up to SHOT Show. Um, we saw some some pretty heavy footage of a uh, IDF armored convoy that was moving through Gaza and got targeted by an anti-tank guided missile from Hamas, uh, which immediately following, uh, there, there were apparent casualties from that. We're going to see another one of those. So discretion is advised here. We're going to see a convoy of about, I want to say, three soft-skinned vehicles. The last of which uh, gets hit by something. I'm not entirely certain what it gets hit by because it's uh, too close to see uh, the trail of the ATGM. It might be an improvised explosive device. Not certain. But this is a Hamas release of the IDF's soft-skinned vehicle getting hit. Um, you know, not to, not to draw a light on what is a heavy video, but the first time I watched this, that scared the piss out of me. I just didn't expect it. So that's the vehicle that gets hit. It is the same configuration effectively as the first few. Which harkens back to early GWAT days in the brain for me. You know, soft-skinned Humvees uh, in close proximity to buildings. And we're bringing it back up. We're, mo we're moving pretty far on the map for this next one, though. We're going to be mo moving to Sheikh Radwan with footage from near a school. And I want to say this is helmet cam footage here. So here is the school. One of these. And then a hospital. And a mosque. 
but we'll, we'll see footage of the IDF operating in and around this area here. The school itself is the Abdul Rahman bin Auf school. The last part of that, I'm not 100% certain if I pronounce correctly. Doing my best. Doing my best. Footage is coming up now. And there are a few videos that we're going to see here. So this is effectively IDF maneuvering to the school. And then we have footage of once they achieved the school or reached the school. And some of the stuff that they found in the school. Quite an assortment of stuff here. You've got some mortars, uh, what looks like some directional mines or claymores, uh, various RPGs. Various AKs, what looks like a hunting rifle here. That one's interesting. More AKs in the back. Mines, anti-tank mines. So quite an assortment of gear. Obviously the frag grenades and some, um, some very basic radios here. Body armor. And let me just double check these this other video here to see if it provided oh there it was only two videos. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Uh this is coming from the IDF's um uh, Yifta Brigades. We're gonna be moving on the map again, so let's head back to the map. Even further. Sorry, I had to cough. <clears throat> now, the IDF's Yifta brigades are engaged in and around uh, what was described as a girls' school and a mosque. Some more mosques, another medical center. I don't recall exactly where the girls' school was, but I did research that. Ah, there it is. Rosary's Sister School. So that footage is coming up for you guys now. Here it is. Just a just a note there. To me, this looked like he was firing at that security camera here. That's what that that's what that looked like to me. Or maybe the control box next to it. Let's bring it up. Um, need to check in on the support here. And thank you guys very much for it. Bad TV, thank you for the 628. Stay informed. Thanks for that. Uh, Harold, thank you for the $10. Once again, thank you for the $10. Uh, Elite94, welcome to the Funkers. Jack, Thanum, and the Ottoman64. Thank you guys for hitting the member button. Appreciate that. Uh, Tyros, 
Thank you for becoming a member. And gentlemen and scholar, thank you for the two months as a member. I appreciate you guys. We're moving into Khan Yunus. Now, uh, big boom coming up for you here. We saw a similar video to this one last Friday, where wherein the IDF... Uh, this is actually a different video. So what you're what you're going to see here is a drone that is being flown into a mosque near uh, Khan Yunus uh, that provides a little bit of an insight on some of those tunnel entrances. I'll have to go and uh, and grab the tunnel video. Stand by while we watch this one. I just copied the wrong pasta. Just watching this one more time so I can see if I can find... Ah, found it. All right. Coming back up, because I think we've watched this one through once. Here is the IDF destroying that tunnel complex. Now, again, we watched this once before. This one has a little bit of additional context for us, though, which is it's really interesting. Um. We didn't watch this one. Let me let me clarify. We watched another that will this will be reminiscent of that, and it looks like a very large explosion. But what you're effectively seeing is uh, demolition of that tunnel complex, and because of how broad and wide it is, uh, the demolition charges for that are essentially that that blast is coming out of every crevice, every hole, uh, and it just spans a very large area. The additional context that we have here is we actually see, I want you to pay attention. We'll watch this twice through. Pay attention right here. You're actually going to see um, the demo as it ignites the, the series of charges that are laid underneath of this area. Big bada boom. Uh, Todd, thank you for the $10. Tell my wife, Tina, hello. Hello, Tina. Todd seems nice. Now, reportedly in Khan Yunus, I don't have a geolocation for this one. These are IDF troops. This one's coming from the website in the new player. These are IDF troops um, taking contact and maneuvering. going to be getting into Rafa, moving into the south. I want to kind of give you guys, we're going to go back to the ISW's map here. So we just spent some time in Khan Yunus, okay, around about here. These are those claimed controlled areas by the IDF. We are moving to, I want to say it's somewhere up in this area. I do have an exact geolocation for you. And this one, this would have taken place on the 24th, so the day before Christmas. Um, a lot of aid is flowing into Gaza. Uh, a lot of it. And I mean in the uh, 
tons and tons of aid. Well, here is what it looks like when it gets there. What you hear in the background is, quote, Hamas police firing presumably into the air, though I can't be certain, trying to disperse the crowd that is there to receive that aid. Now we know that this is where, this is in that, I'm gonna pull up an exact geolocation for this, is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Now they're picking up the aid from back here. Chaos. Now, if you look closely, you can see a, a couple of folks, a couple of Palestinians that might be uh, wounded or injured. But there was additional footage on a smaller scale, though. It would have been, I want to say, from maybe like December 4th, December 14th. It was from too long ago for us to cover tonight. One of the things that I try to do is cover as much current footage as possible. But on a much smaller scale, there was additional footage and additional context of Hamas uh, just absolutely beating the hell out of people that were there to receive aid. It's been reported multiple times that aid is being interdicted by Hamas uh, and stored and set aside uh, and not making its way to Palestinians. This would end up being effectively two videos, uh, and um, I'm nearly certain there are you know, infinitely more, I shouldn't say infinitely, many more that provide that same context to support the reports that Hamas is intercepting or interdicting this aid uh, and either rationing it or um, controlling access to it in some way. Uh, ultimately, again, I'm here to show you the footage to support that. And that's what we just saw. Let's move into Rafa, though. Actually, I want to show you exactly where this took place. It is very close to the Egyptian border. So we'll go back to Google Earth. Here is the geolocation for it, as long as I did my job. I did. So it is this road that you're seeing. Everybody move down. And then you have the border here. All right. Well, we're moving into Rafa, where on the 23rd, so this was the day after our last stream. It's a little bit dated, but it was a prominent strike. I don't know why I came up from earth but we're headed to right here a prominent strike on a hamas official hassan al atrash and he's reportedly responsible for the supply and production of hamas weapons 
That strike is coming up for you now. All right. Now, I want to go back. I want to go back to something that I don't have a script for the show. So it's, a, it's important for me to note that I have a list of videos right now in the process of building that list of videos uh, under a lot of circumstances, you know, thought and uh, analysis goes into uh, the research for me putting them there. I want to go back to the to the previous video of aid uh, and the process for which it is assumed it would make its way to Palestinians. It's assumed that it would make its way to Palestinians via coming across uh, the border and then Palestinians would just grab it. Hamas is the government for in in Gaza. So from a certain perspective, it, it would be it would theoretically be Hamas's job to control that aid. Now, controlling that aid by uh, using gunfire to disperse crowds and beating people with sticks doesn't seem like an effective means of controlling aid. But I do think it's important to note that it would theoretically, uh, as a quote, elected uh, government from a certain perspective, I think it's important to note that that would theoretically be their job, right? So. Uh, them interdicting it and controlling access to it, uh, rationing it if they felt necessary, would th that would be what they would do. Now, the means by which they are doing it, I find to be interesting. Beating people and dispersing crowds with gunfire. All right. Uh, we've got a general section here. The general section is no idea where this stuff takes place. We know it takes place in Israel, uh, and more specifically... Um, actually more specifically Gaza. But what we have here is more IDF fire and maneuver. Doggy. All right. Let's bring it back up. Checking in on the support and thank you guys for it. Steve, thank you for $50. It's a lot of dollars, sir. Uh, have a blessed new year and you as well. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Rusty Shackelford, thank you for 45 months as a member. That's a long time. And Omar Little for 36 months. Alice for 29 months. Mary Beth for 29. Uh, Bath McNabb, thank you for seven. Uh, Helio Mars, thank you for seven. Uh, Garatoski eight, thank you for 12 months. A whole year. A whole year. And Mad Mikey, thank you for three months. Appreciate that. Somebody asked me if I've seen the Ukrainian-Russian pilot one. I have. We'll watch it. Um, you got to remind me because it didn't make its way into the script. But I watched it right before the show and somebody asked me if it was real. And I have no idea. But it's uh, comical to say the least, if it is. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll watch it though. I've got it in my notifications. A couple more videos from Israel, though. 
still in the general section here, we have a Hamas release. Now, this Hamas release is interesting because we talk a lot about the trophy system and whether or not, you know, not being certain that some are trophy intercepts and aren't. We're going to see multiple top-down attacks of uh, Hamas operatives or militants, whatever you want to call them, uh, terrorists. Hamas is there. They, they meet every definition of terrorism. You know, I do my best to show you as many perspectives as possible, but, you know, when you meet the definition of a, a terrorist, you are a terrorist. Um, we're going to see multiple top-down attacks from extreme close quarters with RPGs here. Now, when I say extreme close quarters, we are, uh, they are still meeting the, um, you know, minimum arming distance for the RPG. You'll see it here in the, here in the footage. Those are close. Bye bye, Savage. That last one's a hit. I saw a really stupid question in the chat. Uh, does the Betsy Ross flag make you a terrorist? Uh, I have a I have a really dope shirt of the Betsy Ross flag. I don't know I don't know why that would. Um, but anyway, uh, there was another one in there was another one in the chat that I meant to respond to. I kind of got fixated on that one though. Uh, and let's move on to the next footage. Uh, not safe for work on this one. Uh, and we need to head back to the website because I copied the wrong link and didn't do my job. Actually, let's just do this together. Here we go. So we're headed back to the website here. And I'm looking for a specific video that I thought provided a whole lot of um, context. It's right here. Uh, so this one I want to say was put up by Josh. Yeah, Josh did this right up for us. And we're going to see exactly what the title describes. So, you know, discretion's advised here. We will see wounded IDF. But here's the footage. I think he meant the Gadsden flag. I got one of those, too. <laughs> Then he said, what's your name, Antonio? So the specific context that I'm speaking of here is in the background, you're going to see some form of a belt fed laying down fire. You're, a, you're a, a, a effectively seeing in, infantry supporting armor, armor supporting infantry. 
Gold rein versucht. Der geht's Mund. Der nicht rein. Gold auch schon. Der geht's Mund. Pause. Hi. Don't pick a fight with the mods because you won't be here long. All right. So he is absolutely right. Keep your comments polite and civil. There's a difference between discourse and being a dickhead. Don't pick a fight with my mods. Just a warning. So you saw him, uh, you know, effectively providing cover while they got the stretcher ready. And you see another stretcher being set up over here.
All right. Let's come back up. I got a little bit of an intermission for you. It's video. You know, it's not like a, it's not like a, anyway. Uh, here's a controlled detonation in extreme high quality. Don't have a great location for it. Intermission. Steve, thank you again for the 50. And thank, thank you guys all for the likes on the stream. Appreciate that. Super easy. And thank you uh, to those that have passed along uh, the congratulations on the new baby. The wife and I appreciate it very much. Boom. Oh, we're going to make a pit stop in Myanmar on our way to uh, the Ukraine footage. Specifically, we're going to be stopping in Lao Kang. <clears throat> Excuse me. And check in on our uh, favorite communists. This one's on the website as well. I saw a comment in the chat, somebody asking uh, about our app. Yes, we do have an app. It was released back in... Um, about almost two years ago at this point. We're up, we're over 500,000 downloads of the app. And it's always improving. Nothing's perfect, right? Uh, we're still five, six dudes, right? Don't have any backing from any major conglomerate. Uh, it's all bootstrap developed. We just, you know, finally released our video player, which was really the last third-party reliance. Uh, nobody can shut us down at this point, uh, except for us, if we do it on accident. Anyway, uh, let's check in on Myanmar as the Myanmar National Democratic Alliance Army, MNDAA, uh, is engaging uh, junta. So the military authoritarian government that took that took over in 2021 as they are engaging, uh, you know, effectively government forces from the roof. Rip Gaston Glock, by the way. Is he got a 40 sitting right there? I think that's the first time I noticed this. Is that a Glock? Yes, it is. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of other footage if you're interested in you know catching up on the uh you know in myanmar's attempts to take back their country from that authoritarian military power that took place uh there's quite a bit of footage on the site from Myanmar. Um, you'll find most of that under the combat tab, uh, which is going to, this is going to work in app as well. Uh, but you've got more footage there. This is just one of the most recent releases that we have. Um, there's one with a, uh, you know, pretty not safe for work. This one here, uh, this video, and I'll link you guys to it if you want to go and watch it, is pretty extremely not safe for work. Uh, it shows uh, more Myanmar rebels. Uh, I copied the wrong link because I'm stupid. Copy image link. That's the one we want. More Myanmar rebels engaging junta forces. But this guy hucks a hand grenade their direction and uh, you know effectively takes out an entire team. We're going to move into Ukraine footage now, though, because there's quite a bit to update you on in the war in Ukraine. And we're going to start in all the way out in Crimea tonight. Uh, discretion advised if you go and watch that video. So let's move to here. Something like 20% of the Black Sea fleet has been destroyed by Ukraine. The latest 
was a landing ship for Russia. It was destroyed here. Now, something to note is it was not the only ship that was destroyed in what is reported to be a storm shadow strike. The ship that was placed here as well is also reported to be partially sunk. This one, however, is gone. What was once is no more. The footage of majority aftermath of that strike is coming up for you now. There isn't currently footage of the actual strike itself. I've got some more details on this. And we're going to watch quite a bit uh, relative to this strike over the course of the next probably 10 to 15 minutes. It was suspected to be loaded down with quite a bit of ordnance, and the cook-off of that ordnance is what you're seeing here. There's the ship name. I did look up how to pronounce it. Uh, no Novocherkask. Novo Novocherkask. But you're seeing the sympathetic detonation of the ordnance that was on board the ship, not necessarily the strike itself. Oh my god, I did it twice, guys. Stand by. I'll give you the link to that video here in a second. Now, I haven't seen any verification of what I'm about to provide you. This is rumor mill information, I'm telling you that ahead of time. I, it's impossible for me to verify this. I've talked about, I've talked about it relative to casualties in this war before. There, once again, is that sympathetic detonation. There's the ship on fire immediately after the strike. Uh, reportedly, somewhere north of 70 Russian sailors were killed. I cannot validate that. Uh, I want to pause here for a second. It's important to note what Russia's response to this was. Russia's response stated that this ship was, uh, quote, damaged. Shit's, shit's gone, yo. It, I mean, it, it is what it is, right? Uh, folks that are tracking equipment losses have, uh, based on the total, both displacement and uh, you know, ships, boats that are um, aligned against the Black Sea Fleet, 20%. Of those in total have been destroyed or at least um, mission killed, removed from service since the start of Russia's invasion in 2022. And that's what it looked like once. No longer looks like that. Here are all of the removals. You had you have the Moscow, um, the sub from a few months ago, uh, the, both a sub and another one of the ships were struck by uh, Storm Shadow. That wasn't too long ago. Okay. Uh, let me grab you guys that other video, and this time I will get the proper link, and I'll do it the right way so that um, you can go and watch that if you'd like to see it. Or you can just go to the site after the show. Or follow this link right now. Up to you. Uh, here is just another video of the before and after. This one's coming from our Twitter. And it's some higher resolution imagery in video format of the before and after of the strike. Just, just in case anyone is inclined to believe it was merely damaged. Before or after. Now, Russia launched one of the largest barrages that they have since the start of the war with over 158 missiles and drones at Ukraine over the last 24 to 36 hours or so. I'm going to read I'm going to read through what Ukraine claims to have shot down here, which is quite a few. Ukraine claims to have shot down 114 of 158. 
I want to say. 87 out of the 90 KH-101s. We're going to see some footage of a KH-101 here in a little bit. And 27 out of the 36 Shaheds, the uh, Iranian um, or even Russian analog versions of the Iranian drones. Um, validating that, once again, this is the, the report that was provided. Some of those missile strikes, though, we're going to see here. And we will see evidence of at least one, at least, of those being intercepted. Not in this video, but coming up. Now, the targets that Russia ended up hitting included, included a shopping mall in Dnipro, the city of Dnipro, uh, a maternity hospital in Dnipro. Um, they hit somewhere in Zaporizhia. And a high-rise was also impacted. We'll talk more about that high-rise when we get there. Here's a little bit more specific footage on some of those locations. The first here is the shopping mall in Nipro City. Coming up now. And then more from the maternity ward of the hospital in Dnipro as well. Coming up. One more, same location here. Now, at least one of them landed somewhere in Zaporizhia. I don't have a great understanding of what exactly was being targeted um, in this specific strike. Did I already miss the white Bradley? Nope, that one's coming up once we get um, to Avdivka area. All right. Now, one, at least, if not m multiple, don't have a, again, I don't have a great set of context on where each of these 158 total. Somebody turned a light on in the hallway right outside my office. Anyway, uh, I don't have a, I don't have a great understanding where each of these 158 were uh, headed, um, but at least one of them landed on a high rise in Kyiv. Here is that footage. It's important to note with this footage, though, that this high rise was ultimately hit as a result of Ukrainian air defense intercepting the missile. And you can see that Based on the missile already starting to break up, it doesn't look like that on its final approach. But Ukrainian air defense, and this is a consensus across all accounts, Ukrainian air defense intercepted this missile, and while it was plummeting down to earth, hit this high rise. Ты 
Нихуя себе! Now it's important to, to note something, right? Because you know, folks will say, uh, "I've seen all kinds of you, you know non-essential vitamin takes on this, right? It's, it's Ukrainians' fault." No, if Russia didn't fire the missile, then Ukrainian air defense wouldn't have had to intercept it, right? Um, so if it still is ultimately the fault of Russia, if Ukraine. Uh, not unlike other instances where Ukrainian air defense has intercepted a rocket or a missile flying overhead, a cruise missile, and it ends up falling somewhere uh, and injuring or wounding people, killing people in a lot of circumstances, uh, that still lies at the feet of Russia because they are the ones launching the cruise missile. That is not a bias take. That is a logic take, right? Uh, when you look at that from a, an objective perspective, that's where you end up, right? All right. Now, let's talk a little bit about KH-101s. KH-101s are a little bit more of an advanced cruise missile for Russia. One of those in this large barrage can be seen here. This is interesting. Deploying countermeasures as it flies. Now, those countermeasures are presumably... Uh, self-preservation oriented, right, as most countermeasures are, and are going to be kind of like chaff or, uh, you know, something to, you know, misdirect air defense. That being said, Ukraine has claimed that they shot down 87 of the 90 KH-101s. This is one of the KH-101s, or is at least believed to be a KH-101, that is deploying countermeasures on its flight path. It's actually, there was an article from back in January. One of these um, went down uh, back way back in January of this year, and a website called The War Zone, where I'm a fan of The War Zone. I love reading their articles. The War Zone did an article on uh, some analysis of what was mostly a still intact uh, KH-101. So if you were to head over to the Funker Actual Twitter, at Funker Actual, I linked everybody to that article, and they were speculating about this capability specifically. There were dispensers on the outside of the KH-101 that were believed to be countermeasures, but nobody had ever really seen one on video before. That's exactly what we're seeing here. Now, the last thing that I wanted to, to talk a little bit about before we move on to the rest of the footage that we have for the Ukraine war is, um, I'm gonna paste this in the chat because there's not a chance in hell that I'm gonna be able to pronounce it. That place, inside of Poland. Not too long ago, in a relative sense, um, a missile landed in Poland, right? There was a lot of back and forth on whether or not that was a Ukrainian missile, a Ukrainian air defense that went errant uh, in, it, in its attempts to intercept a Russian missile, um, or if it was a Russian missile that went errant uh, and missed its target in Ukraine. Well, there are, once again, um, some back and forth reports, one of which on my personal account I retweeted, uh, that a missile either landed there in Poland, and I'm going to pull that up, or it entered Polish airspace and then subsequently left. I'm still keeping an eye out for any video to help us better understand that. But here is that location inside of Poland. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this, we've talked about Article 5 of uh, NATO before. Right? It's very close to the Ukrainian border. I want to say it's like 25 kilometers or so. We've talked about Article 5 before. Uh, Article 5 isn't an automatic activation. That's not really how it works. Right? Intent is actually considered, and under most circumstances, Article 4, or effectively a rally to the discussion table, would need to take place before Article 5, which is effectively a strike against one, uh, is a strike against all would take place. But intent still comes into the discussion when you rally or uh, you know circle the wagons on an Article 4 discussion. If it does end up, and again, there's still some back and forth on whether or not it entered the airspace and left or entered the airspace and fell, um, the Polish president actually convened a uh, discussion, um, a Security Council meeting, um, and we'll presumably find out more information. 
Once you have that Article 4 discussion, intent comes into play, and it doesn't necessarily automatically mean that Article 5 gets triggered. It's not an immediate trigger. Intent will matter. All right. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be keeping an eye out for any video related to that. Though. We're going to head to Zaporizhia, where we're going to watch some heavy footage. We're going to talk about this one for a little bit. We're going here. I'm going to go turn that light off really quick. So enjoy the spinny that this is doing for one second. All right, we're back. So this is where we're headed for this next video. And discretion's advised on this one. Something, I'm probably going to get raked for this, but that's okay. That's all right. That's what kind of what we're here for. Something that we actually haven't shown a whole lot of, whether they be Ukrainian or Russian, is execution footage. Uh, it's just not, right? We're going to watch one here in a second, though, uh, for no particular reason other than to have this discussion that we're having right now. It's not really our function or focus to do that. Uh, that's an atrocity. Uh, under most circumstances, when you show some, uh, especially with this war, execution footage, you end up in a what about conversation. Well, what about that time a year ago when Ukrainians did it? Or what about that time when the Russians did it? And what it ultimately ends up leading to is an inability to focus on any one particular action, to see one particular atrocity for exactly what it is. That's what we were hoping to impress upon folks with the tweet that we sent out, was this is an atrocity, let's focus on it and look at it. What we got was you know, a myriad of responses from uh, everything from you know, Russia must burn, which is the, the, the standard, uh, to you know, what about that time back in Bakhmut when uh, Ukrainians executed Wagner? Well, uh, y yes, that's bad, right? That should not detract from discussion on this one, though. We're, we are going to watch this. Uh, what it's going to be is right there in between Verbova and uh, I think that's Novo Mikhailovka, Novo Selivske. Uh, Novo Prokopovka, one of the Novos. You're going to see three Ukrainians, and it might be tough to see, surrender. As they are surrendering, uh, as they are finalizing their surrender, uh, three or four Russians gun them down. Discretion's advised on this one. It's coming up for you guys now. If we what about everything, we're not able to focus on any one thing. It might be difficult to see here, but your focus should be right here. These are the surrendering Ukrainians. You have a Russian team-sized element or squad-sized element here on the left side. Murdoch 89. That's an interesting comment that you have there. Ukrainians probably dropped drones on them and then tried to surrender. As soon as you surrender, you're supposed to be afforded the protections of prisoner of war. Something I've talked about before. This is, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not the guy to scream war crime because crimes and war are going to happen, right? That's one of the, the awful brutal, awful realities of war. It shouldn't be shocking that war crimes happen. It should still shock you to see them. But in war, and the reason that war is a crime is it's gross. Fundamentally, that is ultimately the reason that Funker 530 is here. Um, but again, historically, we're not live leak. 
We're not here to just show you the nastiest of the nasty. And under most circumstances, the uh, executions that we've seen take place in this war have been very up close, uh, very gory, just for the purposes of being gory and sharing that. Uh, we've talked about them, right? We've talked about the beheading. Uh, we've talked about the castration of the Ukrainian. Uh, we've talked about the uh, surrendering Russians that were all killed. Under most circumstances, it's important for us to talk about those, but just sharing them to share it isn't really what we're here for. We want to show you maneuver. We want to show you what it looks like to do a combined arms breach, uh, what it looks like to try and clear a trench. And in the process of doing that, sometimes, you know, war happens in that stuff. We're not, we're not here to share with you the nastiest things that we can find because there's some pretty, pretty nasty stuff out there because, again, war's gross. Now, speaking of surrender, though, also reportedly near Verbova, we have this video. There's a discussion that goes around, you know, quite often as to whether or not you can surrender to drones. Discretion's advised on this one, but what you're going to see here are Ukrainians surrendering to human beings and then following a drone to presumably Russian lines. Discretion's advised uh, because I do believe they're deceased when the video opens, um, but I found this one to be interesting. And it's reported to take place near, once again, Verbova. Now we're going to be moving out to Evdivka. We are going to jump through the map pretty quickly here. Now, exactly where this takes place in Evdivka, I'm not 100% certain. But it is more Russian ground footage capturing a Ukrainian position. Uh, we're looking at this from kind of a macro perspective. Uh, it's going to be about a probably just over a squad sized element uh, capturing a Ukrainian position held by four Ukrainians, one of whom gets killed. Um, and the rest surrender. There is music on the back side of this one, so I have to keep that, keep the sound off here. Uh, there's an interesting question in the chat, Randall. Uh, what if troops surrender, but the other side has no means of accepting prisoners? So that is one of the qualifying factors for receiving um, the benefits of being a prisoner of war, is the ability to accept a surrender. So again, there have been circumstances where Russians have attempted to surrender to a drone. Um, there are... I wouldn't say a checkbox, but here is the Ukrainian that's killed. And the other three are about to surrender now. I wouldn't say a checkbox, more again, qualifying factors that afford you the, the protections available um, set forth by Geneva. And one of those is your ability as you know a, a military to receive prisoners of war. Something to keep in note, or to, or to keep in mind, I am not, I am not a Hague lawyer. I am here to document footage, and in the process of documenting footage, in the process of discussing footage, uh, I conduct research on that footage. Um, and in some circumstances, I can get a pretty good handle on things based on um, 
under a lot of circumstances, it's face value. When it comes to those deeper gray areas, like can you surrender to a drone piloted by a human that could theoretically lead you back to um, your lines? I, I'm not, I don't know. Don't know. I'm just here to document the footage. All right. Let's talk about the White Bradley. This has been a bane for Russia near Avdivka. And I would take a step further and say anybody that is operating solely, unless it is from a Hague lawyer, any, anybody that is operating solely off of the information available publicly and saying you can or cannot, uh, I would have a hard time taking that at full value. Anyway, we're moving to here, to Stepova, where we're going to see the White Bradley. Now, the White Bradley is a tan Bradley. It is a uh, flat, uh, a, a desert tan Bradley that is just absolutely wreaking havoc here in Stepova on Russian positions. We've seen quite a bit of footage from Stepova. Uh, Bradley's firing into, you know, this tree line. Bradley's firing into this tree line. And we're going to see more of that. I'm going to give you some context on why it's called the White Bradley, though. It's going to come direct from Russian telegrams. Footage is coming up now. Now, what the Bradley is engaging is there are a series of uh, BMPs up here that have been taken out of action in Stepova by the Ukrainians. So there are Russian troops in and around uh, those vehicles. That's what he is engaging. Let me show you why I'm calling it the White Bradley. I didn't make that up. Uh, Russians did. I'll show you a image here. This is a translated image of Russian telegrams. <clears throat> and this is actually from about a week ago, right, with the last video. And we did watch the, we did watch the video that it's referencing. Um, but at the time, I wasn't really aware of this, this telegram conversation. Uh, but you'll note the White Bradley again. When will he be locked up already? Uh, this thing for the past couple weeks has just been absolutely wreaking havoc. So if you were to search uh, in quotations on Twitter, White Bradley, you're going to come up with a ton of memes on it. Let's bring it up. We're going to move to Horlivka. This, one's, this one might be tough to watch too. So discretion is advised on this next one. Where, let me give you a, let me give you a uh, exact geolocation on this. So we're going to move from Stepova here in the Avdivka area. And I should give you some better context on what Avdivka looks like. This is an area that, you know, Russia has continued to align a lot of combat power against. Uh, they've gone into uh, quite an offensive posture in a couple areas, Avdivka being one of them. We're going to talk about one of the other areas here in a minute, which is Kupiansk, uh, and more specifically, Sinkivka. We talked about that on Friday. But we want to move towards Horlivka. So let's go back to Google Earth, because I can't drop that long into deep state. We're going to go here. Now, there's going to be a Ukrainian element scaling this. Uh, I want to say this is like a landfill pile here. They're going to be scaling this. 
in engaging presumably Russian positions. One of the Ukrainians attempts to throw a frag grenade, and that frag grenade is going to roll back into his team. Discretion is advised on this one. This is that team here to the left. Uh, this is the Ukrainian that's about to throw that frag. Tries hucking it up that hill, and it just rolls down right here and hits his team. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to break the momentum for the advance entirely. And the Ukrainians withdraw. All right. Let's bring it up. We're going to head to Kremina next. In those... And see some, you know, relatively close range combat here. where Ukrainians are engaging an unknown-sized element and end up taking one of them prisoner. So we will have audio on this one. Here you are. A lot of beeps, though. I didn't put the beeps in here. Beep. <laughs> Как твой позывной, скажи? Центр, центр. Жаль, твой центр. Руки в сторону. Забирай корся с ним. Подходь, подходь. Подходь. Ямы, ямы. В ямы, крию. Назад, кри. Скорпия, крию, давай. Хочешь спастись, давай. Хуже уже не будет. Давай, давай. Ты попал в доблестный батальон Карпатская Сич. All right. Uh, this just is their end screen that they have. So the videos, videos over at this point. Let's move on. We're going to move up to Sinkivka. Let's head to um, Deep State, and we'll talk about the campaign map there. As another one of those areas where Russia has gone very much so on the offensive. Now, over the last few months, up until, well, I shouldn't say the last few months, up until a few months ago, um, Russia had 
effectively transitioned to a very defensive posture. Um, that being said, Kupiansk has been a stated or uh, known goal for Russia for quite some time. We're going to see quite a bit of footage, including a piece of follow-up footage, a portion of which we've already watched. Uh, in Russia's attempts to take Sinkivka. And they actually uh, harken back quite a bit to the wave tactics being used in both Bakhmut and, Av and Avdivka. Now, in Avdivka, Russia has still managed to gain you know, small amounts of ground over time. Uh, as you, you guys who have been here uh, over time have seen, that has been um, at the cost of quite a few casualties. Um, so... We're going to be actually starting off with just, I thought, some interesting footage of a BMP-2 absolutely kind of lighting into a tree line. But then we're going to be going through some footage of one of those wave-type assaults on Sinkivka from Russia. So here's that first bit of footage from the BMP-2. We've seen similar footage of the Bradley. I always like to, to see things in contrast. So you'll see the fire rate here of this BMP-2. What am I aiming at? Everything. Well, it's presumably some form of high explosive 30 millimeter that he's laying in here. Uh, you know, it's effectively going to suppress as infantry moves to take those positions. Uh, so, yeah, you kind of are just mowing whatever you can down in that area. It's not unlike we've seen footage of Bradley's kind of uh, just engaging a tree line, like a whole, a whole ass tree line. Everybody said, well, they're just spraying and praying. No, they're purposefully laying into an entirety of a tree line because you're going to have dug-in fighting positions all across that tree line. Um, let's go to the map. And uh, we're starting to wind down here. I have only four or five more videos. But we'll see some footage of some of those waves here in Russia's attempts to take Crimea. Now, we've already seen some of this, uh, not necessarily this one, but the follow-up video that I have uh, coming immediately after. Um, we saw some footage on Friday of Russians as they had made their way into some of these outskirts. Uh, that's just one of many waves in Russia's attempts to take Sinkivka, which is the first leg as they get closer and closer, or as they would theoretically get closer to Kupiansk. Here is one of those waves. Something to note here, because if you blinked, you missed it. This tank up front has a mine roller on the front of it, and it found one. It's D. Pickham that you see landing there. Dual purpose improved conventional munition or cluster munitions. And just, I mean, look at the vehicles. 
There's quite a few here. One, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven, eight, maybe nine there, 10, 11, 12. This next video is a bit of a follow-up. We watched some footage uh, last week of one of these waves uh, in a more snowy climate, exactly what the, from a timeline perspective, exactly how these fall, I'm not certain, uh, that showed a large armored assault on that same area. This is the same spot that we're going to look at here, wherein one of the Russians gets tied up on one of his vehicles. Well, there was a longer version of that video that I hadn't yet seen. And I want to provide that because it provides a whole lot of clarity and context as to how Ukraine is defending that spot. Another one of those waves to try and take Sinkivka. There's music on, on this video. Going to keep that muted, though. Ronnie, when the guests going to start being on the stream? Um, I actually tweeted out a photo of the, the new studio in its current state. Well, we're still a couple months out from that. Uh, it's just me working on it. You know, the new studio is still in my house. So um, between the responsibilities that I have with the Funker team on a nine to five perspective and this stream, I'm having to time manage a little bit on the setup of that new studio. This is a little bit longer of a video here. Is this a Russian column? Yes, these are. This is a Russian column attempting to take the immediate outskirts of Sinkivka. You can see some of these vehicles dropping off dismounts that just happened there. And something that I find interesting with quite a bit of this footage is the vehicles don't typically stay, right? From a take and hold perspective, they're typically used uh, to shield infantry, drop off infantry, and then return, which is exactly what you're seeing here. And that's what you're going to see for, through the entirety of this. Now, if you blink, you might miss this, but there are two uh, dismounts here with like a winter camo of some kind on, and the rest of them are wearing like dark green. Just thought that was interesting from like a kit perspective. This is a Ukrainian drone dropping a grenade on some of those, uh, some of that infantry being dropped off. I don't know if they use a sand table, you know, ahead of time to kind of plan out how exactly they're, you know, what their structure was going to be. I'm sure as a part of that, they didn't plan for him to get attached to the vehicle and drag behind it. Now you'll see that this is the last, this is about the last Russian vehicle 
as it maneuvers back out of town. He actually, it's a tank and it hits its barrel on this tree. You can barely see it, but as it impacts that tree, snow falls off the tree. Some of those uh, vehicles did not make their full withdrawal. And then in comes uh, what I would presume to be a, um, well, the fire rate might be a little bit too fast for a Bradley. That might be a, you know, Soviet 30 millimeter. But there are still some uh, Russian dismounts that are up. This is a Ukrainian vehicle that has moved in from a defensive perspective. There's also a Ukrainian down here right behind this house. You can just barely make him out, and it's going to point that out to you here in a second. Is this a failed advance? It is. This is that Ukrainian. These were those uh, Russian dismounts. I don't know, you know what the results of that explosion there were but we've seen additional clarifying footage of that over the course of the last couple streams this is just the most complete picture of that specific advance if you were to look into that field <clears throat> this this one probably was was a precursor to the first video that we watched and we watched again a small section of this video last friday um there was also a video of a tank barreling over a house same location likely um, you know, immediately following this as Ukrainians took that ground back. So when somebody, somebody asked the question in the chat, is this a failed assault? Yes, we have actually already seen the follow-up footage though. If you wanna check that out, it was all just last stream. So just last Friday. I have two more video. Well, one more video and then one more video for us to watch. Discretion's advised on this one. Uh, what you're going to see here um, I don't have a great location for this, but what it's going to be is a Russian uh, squad or probably about a squad sized element, seven, eight, nine uh, troops that is engaged by Ukrainians and uh, effectively all of them are killed uh, except for one. He tries to take cover inside of a blown out vehicle until a Ukrainian walks up danger close and drops a grenade inside of it. Uh, he jumps out of the vehicle. I'm just giving you a heads up on what you're going to see. He jumps out of the vehicle uh, and immediately surrenders. Here's the footage. All of the all of the sound on the backside here is not real, so we're not going to listen to that because we might get a copyright problem with the with the stream. So these 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 are this is that you know lone Russian kind of fighting to the last. Engaging these Ukrainians. This is a Ukrainian moving towards the vehicle now. He's going to huck a grenade in there. So that Russian has moved inside that vehicle for cover. There's a blown out panel here. That grenade just fell inside. He falls out onto his squad mates. Oh, this one's still alive. But he is, he surrenders now. And we're in our general section. I don't have a great understanding of where exactly this took place.
So you've got one guard here covering the POW while the rest check everybody else. I'm not sure what ended up happening to this one guy that was still alive. A white flag in top right. That, that's a piece of trash. At least that's what it looks like. Because again, you know, this last remaining Russian here was fighting up until the last moments there before he climbed into uh, that vehicle. Uh, you can't fly a white flag and then continue to shoot at the enemy. So um, it's probably a piece of trash. I got one more video for you, but that's going to round us about out for the stream tonight. Uh, and thank you guys very much for being here. Uh, checking in once more on the support. And thank you guys for it very much. Patriot James, thanks very much for the $2. I actually missed that one earlier. Uh, and I'm so sorry for it, but thank you very much for it. He says, congrats on the fatherhood, brother. Brother, Thank you. This will be number three for us, Forever Girl Dad, and I love it. Uh, I'm surrounded by wonderful ladies that are infinitely better people than I am. Let's just put it that way. But I have one more vehicle, or not vehicle. I don't have any vehicles for you. Uh, none whatsoever. I got one more video for you. Uh, <laughs> discretion's advised on this last one, but I don't really care what where you come from or what culture you're a part of, if you're stupid, I'm going to make fun of you for it. This has been uh, the Combat Footage Show. And thanks very much for being here. It's imperfect. It's just here to show you whatever context I have for the footage that's coming out of uh, war from around the, from around the world. Uh, the stream is going to automatically redirect you over to the other stream where we're going to kick back and maybe have a couple beers, chat about the show tonight. Um, have a little bit of fun and maybe bring the mood back up. All right. You, uh, here's the last video. This video is a vibe check. And again, don't end up as the last video on the Funker combat footage show. Okay. Good night. And stay informed. Good night.